Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the GT Power V6 Duo, a new AC-DC battery charger that costs less than $100. In terms of specs, the V6 Duo supports input voltage between 7 to 28 volts when it's powered using the DC connector and when it's AC powered it supports between 100 to 240 volts so you can use it all around the world. The supported battery types are LHV, LiPo, Lylon, Life, NIMH, NICD, and PB, so it pretty much covers all the popular options, and it can charge LiPo batteries between 1 to 6 cells. The maximum charge current per channel is 16 amperes, the maximum discharge current is 3 amperes, and when the charger is powered through DC, the maximum power is 400 volts, which is shared evenly between the channels, which means that the output power per channel is 200 volts, and when it's powered through AC, the maximum power for the entire charger is 200 watts and it's shared between the channels, which means that for example, one channel can charge at 150 watts and the other one at 50 watts. Inside the box, you can find the charger, the user manual, an AC cable, and also these two rubber legs, which you can stick on the back and then they are going to raise the charger, which is going to make it a little bit easier to read the display and also to operate it. On the top part of the charger, you can find a 2.4 inch color LCD screen. And this is not a touch screen and the entire operation of the charger is done using these two rotatable and clickable dials. Over here, you can find a light sensor. So the brightness of the screen can be adjusted automatically. On the front of the charger, you can find two female XT60 connectors and two balance connectors, and this charger can support up to 6S LiPo batteries. The left ports belong to channel 1, and the right ones belong to channel 2. On the back side of the charger, you can find a pretty big fan, a micro USB port for updating the firmware of the charger, a USB port for charging accessories, and it supports 5 volts and up to 2 amperes, the AC input, and over here you can find the DC input, which is a male XT60 connector. Unfortunately, they chose not to use an XT60 connector. So in order to use LiPo batteries in order to power the charger, you will need to make or buy an adapter. And unfortunately, one is not included. In addition, this charger does not feature an on and off switch. And I really wish that the manufacturers of these chargers should implement one, because then you can just leave the charger connected to the power supply and turn it on and off when needed. In terms of dimensions, the V6 Duo is bigger than the SDT D2 and the Hubimate D6 Duo chargers. It's about 20% wider, and it weighs 752 grams, which is about 200 grams more than the other two chargers. Now let's power up the charger. And the reason I'm using a battery in order to power it up is because there is a bug in the firmware, and when it's powered using AC, the fan is constantly turned on and you can hear that it is a bit noisy and unfortunately it's not possible to configure it through the settings of the charger so I hope that GT Power are going to release a firmware update soon that is going to solve this issue. Controlling the charger is done using these two scroll buttons. You can see the indication of the channel on either the top left or the top right corners of the screen and the left button controls channel 1 and the right one controls channel 2. Moving the scroll button is going to switch to the appropriate channel. So if I'm just going to either press or scroll this button, it's going to change to channel 2. Short pressing the button is going to take us to the program settings menu. So first of all, you can select the battery type. You can select the charging mode. So you can set it to balance charge, charge, fast charge, discharge or storage. Next, you can set the end cell voltage. You can set it between 4.15 all the way up to 4.25 volts. That's of course related to the battery type. So if I'm going to set it to LHV, you'll be able to set it all the way down to 4.3 volts and all the way up to 4.4 volts. Next, you can set the cell count. And if you're going to connect the battery, this value is going to be determined automatically. You can set the current setting. It goes all the way down to 0.1 amperes and all the way up to 16 amperes, which is by the way the default value. So be careful not to charge small batteries using these current settings because it's not going to end well. In order to start the battery charging, press the start mode. It's going to check the battery. And of course now no battery is connected. So the charging procedure is not going to be started. 
In order to enter the settings of the charger, you can either long press the channel 1 or channel 2 buttons. Then over here, you can set the channel 1 or channel 2 maximum output power. By default, it's set to auto. The options that are available are either auto and then 10 watts all the way up to 200 watts in 10 watts increments. Next, you can set the minimum input voltage, which is important if you are going to power up the charger using an external battery. By default, it is set to 10 volts and you can set it between 9 volts all the way up to 24 volts. If you're going to use a 4S type of battery, I recommend to set this value to 14 volts. Next, you can set the backlight. You can set it to low, middle, high, or automatic, and then it's going to use the light sensor in order to adjust the brightness of the screen. The volume can be either set to off, low, middle, or high, and the language can be set to either English, Chinese, Deutsch, French, Spanish, and Japanese. Next, you can perform a firmware update, so you need to connect the charger to your computer, and at the moment of shooting this video, no firmware update is available, so I cannot show you the updating procedure. Finally, you can see the system information and perform a system self-checking. Now I've connected a 4S type of battery to channel 2. When the battery is connected on the main screen, you can see its voltage and the voltage per cell, of course, if the balance plug is connected. You can also scroll down to this display where you can see the voltage of the battery that powers the charger, if one is present of course, and the temperature and the total voltage of the battery that is being charged. Now the battery is being charged, so over here you can see the current, the total milliamp hour that the battery was charged with. When scrolling down you can see the resistance per cell and it takes about a minute for this data to be shown. And finally on the top you can see the charging time and the battery capacity. If you want to stop the charging procedure, you can simply press the scroll button and over here you can either adjust the current or stop the charging procedure. The USB port on the back of the charger is always on and you don't need to enter any settings in order to activate it. And even though it states that the maximum output current is 2 amperes, I could only get around 0.4 amperes and I did test it with multiple devices. Overall, if you are in the market for a new AC-DC charger, I think that the GT Power V6 Duo is going to be a good option, mainly because it costs $90, which is less than the price of the ISDT D2, which is, by the way, just an AC charger, and also less than the price of the Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro. In addition, operating this charger is very easy and it's user-friendly, and the only issue I have with it is that the fan is constantly on when it's powered through AC and as I mentioned before, I hope that this issue is going to be fixed on their next firmware update. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you have any questions about the GT Power V6 Dual Charger, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.